I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For more than 10 years now, my husband and I have had an ongoing and spirited debate about how to cut strawberries. Our squabble is not about whether to slice vertically, horizontally, or on the diagonal, to hull or not to hull, or what type of knife to use. Rather, our squabble is about how closely we should cut to the fruit's stem. You see, one of our children has an extreme aversion to eating anything green. Because of this, because of this, I like to give that stem a wide berth. I don't want a speck of anything that remotely resembles vegetation to spoil my child's enjoyment of one of the few healthy foods he truly loves. In my zealousness to get rid of the stem, however, I often chop off a good chunk of the berry's delicious juicy red flesh. This drives Jack absolutely bonkers. What, he exclaims if he catches me before I've managed to hide the evidence of my crime. Look at all that waste. I could have gotten a ton more out of that fruit. Do you even care? To which if it's early morning and I haven't yet had a cup of coffee, I tend to respond a bit snarkily. No, no, I don't care. The strawberries are sliced and they're in the kids' freaking lunchboxes. As for the scraps, well, they're just that, scraps. I'm throwing them away. Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost, Jesus tells his disciples in this morning's gospel lesson. Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. Jesus has just performed perhaps the most famous miracle of his entire ministry. He has taken five loaves of bread and two fish and somehow made them enough to satisfy the hunger of 5,000 people. This is wondrous indeed. Though it is no more wondrous, I think, than what happens next, which is that Jesus declares in no uncertain terms that what is important about this miracle is not just that the crowds have gotten enough to eat in that particular moment. What is important is not just the food that has been consumed by the people right then and there, no, the leftovers, the scraps, have value too. Indeed, they are also part of the miracle. Not only the choicest leftovers, mind you, the juiciest, most tender parts of the fish and the softest, freshest pieces of bread, not only the choicest leftovers, but also the pieces most folks might just toss in the trash. You know, the, the crust all the kids want cut off. Those especially bony pieces of fish someone might choke on. The oily skin of the fish that tastes like old kitchen grease and turns your stomach when you swallow it. Jesus draws no distinction among the fragments of food. He makes no comment on their quality. Instead, he simply instructs the disciples to gather them up so that nothing, nothing is lost. You know, this is, this is a remarkable story on so many different levels. 
It is remarkable because of what it suggests Jesus can do for our world, even when we give him precious little to work with. Not only that though, not only that, this is a remarkable story because of what it suggests Jesus can do specifically with the broken, rejected, cast off parts of our lives. Those pieces of ourselves and of our world, we might be tempted to throw away. It is a story for our time, if ever there was one. We are a fragmented people in a fragmented society. Things all around us have gotten smashed to bits, especially over the past 18 months. Much that once was valued it seems has now been marked for the dumpster. Families and communities have been torn apart by illness and death. Scapegoating and neglect of the poor and the marginalized has increased as resources are stretched thinner and thinner. Political and cultural divides already wide have been widened more still, leaving many of us wondering if perhaps it is no longer even worth the effort to try to understand the perspectives of those who differ from us. The sheer terror of living through a pandemic in which a seemingly healthy young person might run a half marathon one week and struggle for breath the next. The sheer terror of living through this pandemic has left a lot of us prey to a certain fatalism. Maybe we begin to suppose subconsciously. Maybe it doesn't really matter how we attend to the most vulnerable parts of ourselves or how we attend to the most vulnerable people in our midst when even the strong can be felled so easily. Fortunately, Fortunately, Jesus shows us another possibility. Jesus shows us another possibility, not only in this morning's story of the feeding of the 5,000, but again and again and again throughout the Gospels. Rather than pushing away that which appears fragile, tenuous, humiliating, superfluous, or used up, rather than pushing these things away, Jesus urges people to bring him the scraps of their lives. Those leftover and left out parts of themselves and of their world that they and others have rejected. Rather than rooting these scraps out and casting them off, Jesus yearns for people to bring these rough fragments to him so that he can transform them into something new and whole and life-giving. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy loads, and I will refresh you. The child is not dead but sleeping. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. I recently read about a doctor who, as a young medical student caring for desperately ill patients, not able to enjoy regular visits from family and friends, set out to try to find some 
inexpensive way to show them that they weren't entirely alone, that these patients were not completely cut off from human fellowship. This medical student attended a wedding one day where she suddenly got to wondering what on earth might happen to all those beautiful flowers on the tables at the reception. So she decided to ask. She started calling around to various wedding planners and florists and so forth to see what they did with the various bouquets once the wedding guests left and went home to bed. Quite often the answer she got was, well, we just throw them away. The bride may preserve her bouquet. A few of the bridesmaids and close family members may grab a stem or two to press in a booklet, but frankly, most of the flowers just get dumped. Well, this medical student's mind began racing with excitement as she imagined an alternative. What if she were to start going around to different wedding venues and collecting the fragments of leftover floral arrangements and repurposing them to bring comfort and joy to her frightened and lonely patients? Thus it was that Dr. Eleanor Love's initiative, The Simple Sunflower, was born. This is an is an organization that now has over 200 volunteers and delivers almost a thousand bouquets a year to hospital patients in and around Richmond, Virginia. What fragments of our lives might we offer to Jesus today? What fragments of our lives might we offer to Jesus today, trusting that Jesus will repurpose them and can use them to do for us things more wonderful than we can ask or imagine? What parts of our city, our country, our world might we begin to look at differently in light of Jesus' quest to make sure that nothing and no one will be lost. I know it can be difficult to fathom how all the pain and fear and anger and turmoil of the past 18 months might ever come to bear anything remotely resembling fruit. I know how hard it can be to imagine that the countless broken relationships, missed opportunities, and truncated dreams of this pandemic might ever be redeemed. Once though, when I was going through a very painful and confusing period in my own life and lamenting what I was certain had been a whole lot of lost time and nothing else, once when I was going through this very hard time, a wise mentor said to me, you know, the thing is, Julia, once you find out what it is you're called to do, this is still something I'm finding out every day, by the way, once you find out what it is you are truly called to do, then nothing in your life no experience, no matter how painful, will have been wasted. There is beauty in the fragments. There is strength and nourishment in them too. If you and I offer our fragments to Jesus, over time, over time, he will gather them up and transform them into something beautiful and healing and redemptive. He will rescue us from the kind of despair that has all but given up and given in. 
he will find within us that which we feared was gone forever. And not a one of us will be lost. Amen.